In this video, I'm going to go over how to calculate combinations without replacement. I'm going to have another video where I have how to calculate combinations with replacement, but I wanted to treat each one separately and be concise about how to do each one and how to understand each one. As you can see, there are several different variations of notation. The first notation is just NCK, and then there's N choose K with this extra large parentheses and then you have the formula itself, n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. Before we get into the examples, I just want to say if you find these to be helpful, please like and subscribe. So going into the example, we have a, b, c, d, and e, but I, there's also the notation that order doesn't matter. The reason why I say that is when you're taught combinations, usually you're also taught permutations, and a big difference between the two is that one cares about order, the other one doesn't. In this case, order doesn't matter. So because order doesn't matter, if I had the combination of ABC, BAC, and CBA all together, all three of those would be counted as one in the calculation for the combinations. Because it doesn't matter the variance of the order, like it does in permutations, it counts about simply what is picked. So you can kind of think of it as a reductionist version of permutations. The first one I want to go over is simply choosing one out of five. So we have the notation five C one, five choose one, five factorial over one factorial times five minus one factorial, which equals five factorial over one factorial times four factorial. Now remember when it comes to this calculation, these two numbers should add up to this number. Obviously the factorials aren't going to add up to that, but when it comes to just the numbers itself, if you had five over two and six, all right, well, there's a problem there. I just wanted to go over that because that's a type of check you can use to make sure you're calculating it correctly. And then as we see here, we have the factorials laid out. We have five times four times three times two times one over one times four times three times two times one. This crosses out with this, and so we get five over one or five combinations. The next is two, so we have five C two which equals five choose two, or five factorial over two factorial times five minus two factorial, which equals five factorial over two factorial times three factorial. So those both equal five, so that's good. And we have five times four times three times two times one over two times one times three times two times one. So the three times two times one cancel out, so it gives us five times four over two times one, which gives us five times two or 10 combinations. So we have five choose three. So we have five factorial over three factorial times five minus three factorial, which equals five factorial over three factorial times two factorial, which equals five times four times three times two times one over three times two times one times two times one. And just like before, the three times two times one cancel out to give us five times four over two times one or 10 combinations. The last one we're gonna go over is five choose four. We have five factorial over four factorial times five minus four factorial, which equals five factorial over four factorial times one factorial. So those again equal five, which equals five times four times three times two times one over four times three times two times one times one. And those cancel out there, which equals five over one or five combinations. I'm sure you can notice now that there's a symmetry here that between two and three, there's a high point, and then it goes down. And so obviously if you choose zero, so five choose zero, you get one combination. And then when you choose five choose five, you also get one combination. And so it looks a lot like the normal distribution, and it's helpful to understand that because it's also called the binomial coefficient. And binomial distribution, when you get high enough, looks like a normal distribution. And again, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. What I really wanted to do with this video is how to calculate combinations and how to walk through it. In every single case, you'll notice, you'll be able to reduce it down somewhat so it's easier to compute. That's one of the reasons why I have it expanded like I do, so that you understand the process, you understand how to do it. When I tutored and taught stats classes, that was one of the confusions that they had, is just how everything kind of fit together, because there are several steps when you're doing this, especially for the first time, and I just wanted to make clear what they were. 
If you found this to be helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy, my friends.